Hey friends, my name is Ron and on today's video we're going to do a crash course on Figma and build this really cool website together. And I'm going to teach you everything you need from how to use the software, how to use it the right way to set up for success and efficiency. We're going to talk about keyboard shortcuts and all the essential features you need to know. Figma is a really great design software. You can get started with a free account. You can use it whether you're working on a PC or on a Mac and it's great for collaboration. I've been using it to collaborate with my clients and we're using it in Flux Academy to design all of our projects. So it's a really great tool to hone and I hope this video is going to help you do just that. If you want to follow along this tutorial, there are resource files in the starter file uh, below this video so you can download it and work together with me. And with that said, let's get started. So if you're new on Figma, you can open up a new account. And if you want to follow along this tutorial, you can clone the assets that I'm working in. I'm going to put the link to this clonable project below the video. So you're going to click here, duplicate, and that's going to open up a new Figma file for you. And we have a bunch of stuff here to make our life easier on this design. I'm going to show you everything that we have here. But first, I want to give you a little bit of context to the Figma interface if this is the first time that you're looking in Figma. So what we have here in the middle is basically our board and all of our designs are going to go in here. Um, if you're going to hit your space bar, you can see that my cursor is changing into a hand and then you can grab along and pan and move around here in case you have a lot of things. And you can also go ahead and zoom. You can either do this here from the corner or you can hit command plus or minus on your keyboard to zoom in and see what we have here. Um, so Let's see what we have here. I have an image here, which is kind of like a wireframe of the structure that I want to have for this page. Now, sometimes your wireframe are going to be sketched out like this. Sometimes they're going to be digital, but now we have this and we can see the layout that we're trying to build here. I have this for color reference and the kind of like the look and feel I want for this website. And I'm going to use these free 3D images that you can find here. Uh, you can click here. This is a free com community resource that you can use as well. I've pasted the images that we're going to use right here. Now we're going to use these uh, fonts. So this first font is called Outfit, um, which is a free Google font and it actually loads automatically. Google fonts automatically loads in Figma. And we're also going to use this Robota font. Um, and then you can see the text that we're going to use right here. Now, on the left side, you have your layers panel. And in case you don't know what layers mean, this is our basically everything that we have here on the, the board. And you can see with the little tiny icon that you have here that we have a bunch of different things here. So this is an image and this is just a rectangular or a shape that we have here. And then we have some text signified by this T that we have here. Now, you're, you might be familiar with layers from software, different software like Photoshop or other design software. If not, the main idea here is that if rectangle, if this layer that is selected um, is above these other layers, it means it is on top of it. So you can see I'm going to drag, hit and drag this rectangular and you can see it is on top of these two other layers, rectangular 19 and 17. But if I'm going to drag it below them, you can see right here now it is below them. So layers, they stack one on top of another like layers. I'm actually going to delete these colors so uh, to use so I can teach you how to use the color picker. It's going to be a nicer example. So this is the layers and you can see that they are grouped together inside of this frame. In a second, we're going to talk about this and we can collapse this little arrow uh, to see that they're all grouped together. This helps us organize and understand what's going on in our panel. On the right side, we have basically the settings of each element that we're going to pick. So if I'm clicking and choosing this font layer, you can see that we have a bunch of stuff here. We'll get to some of them along this tutorial, we can see the font and the size and all kinds of different properties that will, um, yeah, that will start using. So this is what the right panel is for. So with that said, let me zoom out and let's start with the first, basically first step, which is to create a frame. Now a frame, the idea of a frame, you can see here, we have this icon for frame and it also gives you the shortcut F. A frame is basically the page 
the, the format that we are designing for. And you can see that when I click it, um, you can see it gives me a bunch of sizes for phones or for tablets. Uh, in this case, we're gonna design a website for mobile, so I'm just gonna hit this desktop, and it's opening up a new frame for me. I'm gonna drag it here, and this is where we're going to design. This is gonna help us. We can you know, create different pages so that we can see what's on different page, and we can see um, what information is inside of the page versus information that is outside of the page. We can actually make this longer and we'll probably want to make this longer because this page is going to be longer. I can of course make this wider, but this is a good uh, width. You can see here 1444 designing for desktop. So let's get started using that. Now the first thing I would want to do in this case is to get started with some kind of a dark background. You can see here uh, with the image that I have here, I have this maybe like dark blue. I want this to have kind of like a dark mood, this website. So what I am going to do is I'm going to select the desktop that we, we have here and I'm going to change its fill color. You can see it has a fill color of white and I can click this and I can pick up different colors and I can also use this eyedropper tool, which I can click here and then select a color. So let's go here and select this maybe like dark blue color. And now you can see that we have a background for our page. So this is a good, good place to start. Now, before I'm going to go ahead and start designing stuff to it uh, on this page, I want to have some kind of an organizational structure to this. And this is pretty important. I want to create a grid. If you're not familiar with grid, the concept of grid, you can see here in my layout that, you know, first of all, most of the content is centered in the middle of the screen. And that's if we have a very wide screen, things are centered so that we don't have content that's too wide. That's called container in web design. But you can see here, we have basically two columns here. We have a text and an image. And then here we have maybe logos, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then here we have two columns and then testimonies, we have three columns. We want these things to be organized and we want them to align so that design looks good and clean. And for that, we're gonna need some guidance. And so I'm going to create columns for us to work with. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm gonna select the frame that we have here and I'm gonna go here to layout grid. I'm gonna hit this plus button. And by default, it adds this grid that you can hardly see on this background. But what I am going to do, I don't need this kind of like a grid. I want to change this from a grid into columns because this is what we really want to um, see. But it's very hard to see with this red color on our color. So let me change this into white. Now you can see that we have some columns here, but this is not really what I want. I told you I want them to be centered, right? I want the information to be centered. Now this is very, very tiny. So let's fix this. First of all, I want to have 12 columns and 12 columns is super, super common in web design. And the reason is that it divides by a lot of things. So we can divide it two columns. So each six columns and then six columns, it's divided by three. So that's four columns, four columns, four columns. It's divided by four. So 12 is a good number. So let's go ahead and do width of every column is 75 maybe pixels. And let's change the gutter. The gutter is the spacing between each color to 15. So this is going to give us a center, uh, an area in the center that we can put all of our content in. And these guides are going to help us create content if I'm going to select a rectangular, for example, to make sure that you know this is four columns and then um, maybe I can copy and paste this and you know create three columns here. And by the way, one nice shortcut to learn right now is when I'm dragging things, if I um, hold the option key or alt key on the PC, I can just duplicate things. So this is going to become very, very useful as we go along. So that's a shortcut worth remembering. So now you can see these grids, which are actually just, we can hide them. They're not really part of the design. They're just here to help us position things um, the right way so that now if I want to have two columns, I have here maybe like six and six. These are just helping me to position things and make sure that everything is aligned. And I can go ahead and hide them whenever I want to, but it's just here to help me. Okay, so now I have a pretty good setup to get started with, right? I have my background, I have my grid, I'm ready to start off my design. So let's see what we have here. First of all, we have some kind of a navigation. So maybe we have like a logo here and some links. So let's get started with this. We actually have 
some context here. The name of this company is Crypto. Yeah, Crypto is super trendy right now. So let's design a crypto website. And we've got a bunch of, uh, a bunch of links. So let's drag this here. And we can't see them because they are black on black. So let's change their fill color into white. And now we can see them right here. Let's go ahead and change their fonts. So from here I can write out, outfit. That's pretty good. The logo, I want the logo to be bold so I can change, you know, here the width of the font. Uh, the font. I can actually change also the uh, capitalization. So if I click these three dots here, I get some more typesetting. And you can see here I can change the letter case. So if I'm going to click uppercase, this is going to turn into crypto like this. Let's keep these kind of like lower face. It's kind of like uh, hip and cool. So I'm going to align this to the left side and align these to the right side. Now, one thing to know about text, do you see this? This text has some kind of a box and this box is basically so that if we have a lot of text, the text wraps, right? And that's very common in, you know, in designs, we don't want the text to be too long. We want it to uh, wrap around some kind of an edge. So this is pretty good if you want to have a paragraph, but in case it's just one word, this is kind of annoying to organize stuff when the box is too big. So here on the right, you can see that we have this, this basically means the width, make it automatically based on how much text we have here. I don't want to have to manage these boxes all along. So I'm just going to click this. And now each of these is the right size. And let's go ahead and you can see that as I'm moving things around, you can see these guides that are trying to help me make sure that everything is aligned. Um, I can also do this by selecting all of these and then maybe here making sure that they are all aligned to the center. I also want the spacing to be equal. So I'm going to hit this tidy up and you can see that now Figma organized them in equal spacing. And I'm gonna select all of these things and put it right here at the top where it's, it's pretty good here. And now I want to group them together. Now grouping is really great to, you know, uh, we're gonna have soon a lot of layers like you have here and this becomes pretty messy when later on you want to move things or manipulate things or know how to find things so you can change it. So we can group these elements together by hitting Command G. And that puts them in a group and I can also call this nav bar so that later on I know what this thing is. So we have the nav bar here and we can continue into our first section and a first section in a website is called the hero section. And we have an image here that's half of you know, our main container and then we have some text. So let's go ahead and pick our main image. It's going to be this one. And we already have guidelines, this grid that are help, helping us position it, positioning it and making sure that we know that it's around this size, right? Like half of it, so six columns. And we're gonna position this um, right here. So that's, that's pretty good. And now we wanna bring in our main headline. So our main headline here, um, let's actually grab all the text. So this is going to be our main headline, sub headline, and then two buttons that we have here. Buy NFTs and then sell NFTs. So let me grab all of these elements and bring them onto our page. And of course, turn them into white because we can't see them. And now let's basically go ahead and start manipulating them. So this one is Roboto. Uh, 18% or uh, sorry, 20 pixels. We can maybe change this to 18 pixels, which is kind of maybe solid for uh, body text. And one more thing I wanna show you is that this body text, we're probably going to use this text again and again throughout the design, right? It's going to be very common. So instead of me having to pick the font and the size for each one of them, I'm going to go ahead and create a text style that I can start reusing and applying this and that's gonna make my workflow much faster. So I'm gonna hit this plus button, I'm gonna call this body text. You can see I already have this here, create a style and now this is pretty easy. This one we want this to be a big headline, right? Our biggest headline on a website, usually it's called H1. So let's change this to outfit and let's change this to bold and let's make this really big actually. Let's go ahead and crank up the size of the font and you can see that this is the size of the font and this is the line height, the space between the lines. So you can see that I'm increasing the size of the font but I'm not increasing this and that's why we get this 
not enough space between the lines. So what we can do is we can change this from fixed pixel, we can change it into a, four, uh, a percent base. So let's do something like maybe 110%. And then what we have now is this is probably, this is going to change dynamically uh, in relative to the text size. So maybe now this is good and maybe we don't need 110, maybe actually 100 is pretty good right now. Now, do we need a different capitalization on this? Maybe we, we do this again, we go here for maybe title case. So title case means every word in the sentence is going to have a capital letter. And this is pretty good. I can also go ahead and create a text style here. And I'm gonna call this H1, main heading, um, because if I have another page on the website, I want this automatically to be easy to apply. And working with text styles, if you set them up properly, it's gonna make your flow so much easier. So let's go ahead and create here some buttons for this. How are we gonna create a button? Well, one thing we can do, we can go ahead and pick a rectangular or we can use the shortcut R to go ahead and create a rectangular. And let's do something here like this. You can see it's on top of the text, right? So I can't see the text. How are we gonna bring this down? Well, one thing I can do is I can go here and I can start dragging it below or I'm gonna undo this by command, hit a command Z. We can start learning a, a very helpful uh, shortcut, which is command shift, uh, which is, sorry, command, uh, command option up and down. And you can see that we're moving this layer now up and down, and this is an easy way to kind of move this around. And um, let's change this to a different color. So I wanna pick up this purple color, maybe this, purple color. Well, we've already seen how we can click this, but I'm gonna give you a shortcut. If we, I just hit I for eyedropper, I can immediately go ahead and pick this one. And that's, yeah, that's making my life very, very easy. So let's turn this into outfit. Let's turn this into maybe semi-bold and let's make this um, also uppercase by NFTs. In this case, I actually wanna space out the letters a little bit. You can see here we have also letter spacing. Let's crank this up and you can see that now we're getting a little bit more spacing in the letters and this makes it look a little bit more, more buttony. So this almost looks like a button but everything here is so soft and round. Let's make this button round as well. You can see when I'm hitting this uh, rectangular, here at the top we have this round corner and I can start dragging it uh, or maybe cranking it up this way. And you can see it's going to start making this button super round and I'm gonna crank it actually all the way to the top. Maybe make it a little bit, yeah, a little bit uh, like this. But now we have a nice button here. Now I can go ahead and I can create a group from this. And actually, you know what? It's going to be very easy to just duplicate this. I'm gonna drag it with a shift, just like I told you earlier. And from the second one, which is going to be sell NFTs, um, sell NFTs, I'm going to make it into what we call a ghost button, which is a button that doesn't have a fill, but has a stroke. So let's go ahead and turn down this fill. I'm gonna remove it by hitting this minus one. And I'm gonna add a stroke by hitting this plus one on a stroke. And I'm gonna choose maybe this kind of color, maybe this teal color. And one pixel of a stroke sounds good to me now. We can nicely make sure that they are aligned. And now we have two buttons here. So we have these buttons. Let's take them up and so organize the spacing here a little bit. Maybe we can make this a little bit bigger and align them. And basically we have our hero section. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna select both of them and I'm gonna group them together. I'm gonna to call them a hero section and hero. And I'm actually going to put this below just for organizational uh, structure. You can see we have here two sections on our website. And uh, yeah, we can keep going. Let's see what the next one is. So the next section we have here is some logos. Right, and we, we actually have a bunch of logos here um, and we need the title, you know, as featured, featured on. So let's take the title featured on, um, select white color for it, and let's take this whole thing here. And uh, let's see how we are going to design this thing. So what we have here is we have a rectangular just with a little bit of background and we have four, four images of these logos. 
first of all, I wanna use this as kind of a background and I'm going to span this maybe all across and maybe something like this. And I wanna make this kind of like a very, very soft background color or let's see how we're going to do this. So I'm gonna pick maybe a dark purple color from here and I'm gonna remove actually the I wanna remove the, the visibility of the layout just so that we can see the actual color. Maybe I'm going to remove the opacity a little bit. So you can see I have 100% and this is full opacity, but I can make it a little bit transparent and I'll show you why we're making it transparent in a second. Also, let's give it a little bit of a round corners. So it's cornered as well. And now we can have these logos where we can put them here. We can make them a little bigger by selecting all of them and then um, dragging them here. Now, as you can see, we can, they're being changed, the whole size is being changed. So what we wanna do is we wanna hit, hit the shift while we are dragging and that's going to just scale them kind of like um, proportionally, which is what we want. Let's organize them nicely here. And actually we don't have to work too much because we can just, again, click them and then tidy up and then it's gonna be equal spacing. I think we can also decrease a little bit the opacity of all of them just so that they're not as bright and that looks pretty good this one actually you know what let's go ahead for this button um, i think i want to create a textile from this so let's create let's call this uh subheading yeah i want to use this as a subheading although it's a button so that i can apply this to this subheading and yeah exactly I'm going to reuse this on a lot of things. So this is pretty good, featured on, and that looks good. Now, I feel like the background is kind of bland right now, and maybe we wanna go with this gradient-y, kind of like different gradient kind of color. It looks pretty nice. Let's go ahead and try and do that um, on this background. So the way that we're gonna do this and again, by the way, for organizational sake, I'm gonna group them all together and I'm gonna call this logos. Okay, um, here's how we're gonna do this gradient -y background. We're gonna start off by creating uh, an oval, uh, an ellipse. We can do that by hitting O and I'm just gonna drag something here and let's pick a color that we already have. And now we can use the eyedropper again, but I can also see the colors we already have on our page. So let's grab this teal thing and I wanna blur this. First of all, I wanna put it in the background. So I'm gonna drag it below everything. Now I wanna blur this a lot. So I can do that by hitting the effect and then not drop shadow, but layer blur. Now you can see it started to blur this a little bit here, but if we are going to crank this up by a lot, by a lot. And by the way, I'm hitting shift with up and down arrow so that uh, changes the number in increments of 10. And I'm cranking this up all the way to create this kind of a gradient. And then I'm gonna move this around here. Now you can see it turned out of the page, but I want this to be cropped in the page. So I'm gonna make sure that we are, you can see in the layers panel, it got out of the desktop. I'm gonna keep it back here in the desktop just so that it crops when it hits the uh, the edge of the page. Maybe I can decrease the opacity of this as well, but this looks pretty cool. Let's have another one purplish over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this. I can either copy paste, I can eat, uh, that's option number one, copy and paste, you know, um, uh, command C, command V, or drag it with an alt, we've seen that already. Another way to do this is command D is duplicate, and now we have another one, you can drag it over here, you can pick, maybe this purplish color instead, um, decrease the opacity as well. And let's put them both here and let's group them together. You know how much I love grouping things together so that we everything is organized and I'm gonna call this uh, background circles, circles. And now we start having this kind of a cool background effect that's gonna make the page a little bit more interesting. But why is this, now maybe it Let's make this a little bit more, this is a little bit dark. Let's make this maybe, I wanna make this more transparent so that we can see the background, yeah, maybe like this. So we can see the color is changing here. So this looks nice, I think. All right, 
So now that we have these things here, let's go ahead and continue. Now, the next two sections are actually pretty easy. They pretty much resemble the, the hero section. Um, so we have a image on the left and some text on the right. And uh, at this point, by the way, we can actually start, you know, actually maybe copying and pasting. So let me drag this, this another section here. Uh, I'm going to ungroup this for a second just while we're working on this. So I'm going to hit Command Shift G to ungroup this and break this down. Instead of this, I'm going to delete this image and I'm going to bring back our columns just so that it's easier to organize. Um, and let's take this, whoa. Let's take everything that we have here, six columns to the right size. And on this section, we're not going to have such a big headline. This is H1, the main heading. Here, I think we're going to have, so let me break the, the style, detach the link and maybe change here the, you know, change here the styling to something like this and um, something like this. This looks good, but we need to bring in the text. So for here we have, let's take this built-in analytics. Now, if I'm just going to paste this, note what happened. It's pasting it with this style, so it overrides this style. So I don't wanna do this, I'm going to undo. You can do this, You can, if you want to paste here uh, and keep this style, you can always, I'm gonna to go to the edit, you can paste in a match style and uh, boom. Well, I don't know why it pasted here. Let's go ahead and paste it here. Now you can see it built in analytics to track your NFTs. So now this is basically pasted at the style and let's create actually a new style that's gonna make our life easier. So I'm gonna create a new style and this one I'll call it H2. So this is the second, um, uh, second title of importance. And for this, you know, I'm gonna copy and paste this. Here, I already have a style so I can just go ahead and change this. And this looks good. We also have view our pricing here. Now here for this button, let me show you what's going to happen here. So if I just go ahead and paste the text here, view our pricing, here's what's going to happen. Uh, it's going to break or it's going to get out of the button and that's not what we want. So here's, I'm gonna teach you something cool. Let me go ahead and undo this. While we have this group, right? I'm going to turn on something that is called auto layout. So I'm going to turn this on by hitting the plus. And now it's going to look at this as one unit that have some padding. So it's going to, if I change the text, it's going to try to maintain the same spacing. So by let's buy NFTs, you can see it's changing the, the size of the button based on how much text we have. This is really cool. So now let me go ahead and paste in the text view our pricing and now we have a new button in the right size and this is pretty cool. The only thing that we're lacking here is uh, this analytics thing that we need here, analytics. So let's paste this here and uh, I actually want this to be maybe teal and not like this, not body text, but subheader. Okay, so we have this and we're going to use um, this one, this one for analytics, okay. We're gonna use this uh, image. We have the guides to make sure that we position it in the proper pay, uh, place. And now this looks pretty good. I can go ahead and group it together and call this, you know, analytics. And now I've got it. So we can do the second one, which is pretty easy by just, you know, duplicating this. Uh, I can go ahead and replace this with the last image, but actually this is kind of boring. So I'm not going to go ahead and change all the text, but we can, you know, it's gonna be pretty easy to change the text here. Uh, so where, you know, you see the why guides, the, the layout guides becomes very helpful just to make sure that we keep everything here aligned with the navigation and with everything. So it's very helpful to keep it aligned. So we're gonna have this section here, which we're gonna call maybe get our app get our app and let's see what is the next section that we have. So the next section that we have is going to be our testimonials. So in our testimonials, we want to try something a little bit different. So let's go ahead and um, 
bring in this testimonials, we're going to make this a subheader, a green subheader, and uh, text, I'm going to use the subheader, and I want this to be centered this time. So while this is selected, I'm just going to hit this align to the center, and now it's in the center of the page. I'm going to also align the, the heading that we have here. So I'm going to bring it up, select white, select H2. And um, I want to center it, but I want also the text to be centered. So let's center the text. Okay, so now we have a different layout, centered layout, and let's have three testimonials here. So let's create some kind of a card here and put in, we have here testimonials of three lovely people. Let's go ahead and create one card. So if we want to have three columns, we know it's going to be the size needs to be about four columns wide. So I'm gonna hit R to create a rectangle, um, duplicate this around four columns. So this is about right. Let's create some kind of, I'm going to use the eyedropper to take this background that we have here. And now maybe let's remove the columns just so that we can see how this looks. So we have this very light background. We're gonna give it some round corners. And let's say I want to have, I'm gonna hit O for oval um, so that we can put some kind of, maybe I want the, the profile picture right here. So let's see how we can bring in this image that I'm dragging here inside this circle. So first of all, I'm gonna drag it to put it on top of it. And the way that I'm going to do this is, <clears throat> you can see in my layers panel that we have this image on top of the uh, ellipse, and I'm gonna select both of them using shift and clicking both of them. And then using my right key, I can do use as mask, or I can use command uh, alt or command, yeah, command option M and bam. Now you can see that they are grouped together and this, what we have at the bottom, is the mask and this is the content. So I can click the mask and change the size of the mask or I can go ahead and select the image and move it around inside of the mask. So that's how we have them. And um, that's very nice, let's bring her name. So let's say her name is Olivia and pick the right one. Let's use the subheader let's see if it's a good fit yeah olivia cole that's that sounds good let's bring in some text um, here and this text i'm not sure it's going to be a body text because i think maybe it needs to be a little bit smaller also i want this to be centered so i'm going to hit sorry the center and let's pick here maybe 16 right um and do 110 maybe even 115 for this text, maybe something like this. I want all of these elements to be centered, so I'm gonna click. I'm actually going to choose all of them. So using shift, I'm going to select multiple elements, and you can see they're all selected here, and I'm gonna hit this center align to make sure that, you know, now they're all clear, and then I'm gonna group them together, call them testimonial, maybe item, and now we need to duplicate three of them. Um, so I'm going to turn on the layers. But before I duplicate this, there's actually something I want to do with this image. So this image now is pretty colorful. And although it's nice, I want, you know, we have these kind of like color scheme going on here. And I want the image to be a little bit more online with this. So I'm going to pick, I'm going to double click to get and select the actual image here. And you can see here in the layer, we have this path through. This is what, what's called blending mode. And you might be familiar from this from other tools like Photoshop or Illustrator. This is basically how this layer blends with everything that's on below it. And we can do things like multiply, which is going to be very dark, only the dark color are gonna pass, or screen, which makes only the light color pass. You can see this creates all kinds of very interesting effect. I'm actually going to choose luminosity, which basically means that it's just going to make the image dark or, um, you know, dark or light based on the image. And it's kind of like looks more in line with the color scheme that we have here. Maybe I want to, let's maybe just to make it a little bit more fancy, let's maybe just add a little bit of 
a little circle here with you know with another color just to give it a little bit of a touch of whatever like a little bit of a design flair that we have some things overlaying here and maybe we'll change this to screen so that we have now overlaying i don't know maybe that's nice let's put it inside of the testimonial item not sure about this but looks like this is nice now i can go ahead and duplicate this make sure that we have the right spacing and then duplicate it again and now you can see why the grid is so helpful because it allows me to organize everything that we have here and it looks really really good now we can group all of these together as testimonial testimonial section and we can continue into maybe the last section now i feel like i need a little bit more spacing here so i'm going to select the frame of the desktop and then start dragging here but oh no look what happened this is because figma is trying to make everything relative to you know what's it's inside and make everything responsive i'm not going to go into this in this video because it's a little bit more complex than that but what i can tell you is i can select all of these sections that we have here all of the groups and when it's telling me constrain here like how should this be constrained i just want this to stay in the center and stay aligned to the top of the page so if i'm changing where the bottom of the page is nothing moves so this is something a little bit more advanced and we'll talk maybe in a different video about how to use these constraints because you can do some pretty cool things with it so the last section i want to create here is kind of a call to action section it's just a big section with a call to action and let's go ahead and just create some cool card with a gradient we didn't do gradients yet so i'm going to hit r to create a big rectangular uh, and we have the grid so it's very easy to create uh, it in the right position and the right size and when I hit the fill you can see that so far we've been dealing with solids but we can also go to linear and that basically creates a gradient so we can have a gradient from maybe this teal color to this purple color and you can see we can start moving them around and that's going to create maybe I'll do this a little bit more yeah a little bit more saturated but we have this nice gradient right now so this is nice let me remove the columns so that we don't have to see this anymore and uh, let's give this a little bit round corners this looks like a nice card for a call to action so let's bring in the text that we have here uh, we have are you ready which is we're going to put this here and we're going to give this the style of sub subtext um, and let's go ahead and center this and be part of the next big thing so let's do h2 here whoa we've turned this around we need a bigger box here and we need to center this we need to make it um, white and we want to bring in let's give ourselves a little bit some more space here actually maybe this is maybe we'll do this black just so that we have this big heading stands out and let's also bring a button here right so let me go ahead and double click this to copy and i'm going to hit this paste uh, here because i want to paste in a button so this purple background is not going to work on this background so let's change it to black and let's see what our call to action is here get started so I'm just going to go here and I'm going to type in get started and I want to make sure everything is aligned because it's probably not aligned so selecting all of them hitting center as you can see it wasn't aligned so good thing always make sure you align Let's look at the spacing looks good I can go ahead and um, before I do this you know what I'm going to I see now we have a lot of space here so I can go ahead and you know again this i want all of this to be aligned to the top and to the center um what i want to do we only need to put in the footer but i saw this cool trendy thing where you know people take this kind of a gradient and they put it at the bottom of the website so just do this cool ending 
to the website. Let's go ahead and center this in. Let's put this as part of the footer end of the end of the page. And now all we need to do is bring in some um, some of the links. So let's go ahead and bring the links that we have here. We're going to turn everything into white. Um, what do we need to do here? First of all, let's turn on the layout so that we see that we position them in the right place. Let's go ahead and turn all of these into uh, out, outfit, outfit. And let's also go ahead and make them semi bold. This I remember needed to be uppercase. And we can align this. Now, here we also can use the, um, we can also use the grid, it's very helpful. We can say, okay, these are each of the one of these is maybe two columns. And so we can organize them, it's going to align to everything else here. And this join our newsletter, let's make a field here, let's make this this should be kind of like a, a field. So let's go ahead and create a rectangular. And um, maybe create something like this, this color and make this very, very round and put this below this so we can see these. This is probably, probably we don't need the text field within the field to be so white. So let's go ahead and reduce the opacity a little bit. But this submit, we can actually bring in maybe this button or maybe this button, but make it a little bit, we can put it here, call it submit submit, but actually submit. This is too big to be a button in this field. So let's see, let's break this down. I'm going to hit this and just break this down by clicking. Actually, you know what, I'm not going to do this. I'm just going to um, change the padding that we have here, move this into centered. Um, and yeah, just change maybe change the text size a little bit. Do, 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 do. Where is the text size? Well, I don't want this to be subheader, so I'm going to break it down from the style just so that we can change it. So what I did, I'm sorry, I clicked a bunch of things without explaining what I'm doing. Um, when this was small, I wanted to make sure that the text is actually centered within the button. So I clicked this, and this is basically where where the text is aligned within the element, right? So I've made sure that it's centered in the centered and uh, change the text size. And then let's see how this looks. And we can hide this. And I think it looks pretty good. The next question you're probably asking yourself is how do we now actually turn this into an actual website? And so I'm going to record a part two for this video where I'm going to help you prepare all the assets for development and also show you how to build this website in Webflow. So make sure you are subscribed to watch the next video. And if you want to practice the tutorial that we just did here, make sure you downloaded the resource file and you've tried it yourself. Figma is an amazing tool. You wanna make sure that you know how to do this properly and get some practice under your belt. So give it a try and I'll see you on the next video. Peace out.